Hello, and welcome to the A Quilting Life podcast. I'm Sherry McConnell from A Quilting Life. And I'm Chelsea Stratton from Chelsea Stratton Designs. And we are excited to be with you today on Monday, January 31st for a listener question episode. <laughs> <laughs> They're few and far between, so it's really fun to have one again. Yeah, we've had a lot of really fun interviews lately, which it just kind of worked out that way. And yeah. It was really super helpful for us during the holidays to have those, you know, uh, guest episodes kind of taped a little bit in advance on some of them. Yes. Just freed up some family time for us during the holidays, but we are... Uh, going to keep continuing on with our regular episodes where we address topics and then occasionally these listener question episodes. Yeah. So new find and old favorites. I actually have an app I wanted to tell everybody about. (laughs) It's a great app. This has nothing to do with quilting. Uh, But it does kind of. So, but it is... What I love about it, you can set up all kinds of lists there. So you can do fabric lists that you need or your grocery list. I have a separate Costco list. but And you can do your menu planning on this. I love it. You can put recipes in. You can import them from the web. It it just has been so amazing to me, everything that it can do. But the one thing that I really love that is a really simple feature is the second I put a grocery item in, it categorizes it for me. So then when I go back into my grocery list, all of my dairy products are grouped together, all of my canned goods are grouped together. Just like a really simple thing, but I've really appreciated it. But we will put the name of this app up on the screen. Hey, I'm jumping back in here from after the recording. The name of that app is AnyList terrific app. Okay, so that that's it for my my new find. We're just going to jump right into having Chelsea share her quilts this week. Yes, the quilt on the wall is called Community. I love this quilt. Everyone knows how much uh, by now, how much I love hearts. And so it's cute little houses with hearts in the windows. And I used our Harper's Garden collection for this quilt. It's fat quarter friendly. And I really, it's just a lot of fun to make. And on the table we have- Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I think it would make a super cute pillow with <gasps> yes, just one would. house with a heart yes. or a sham with three houses in a pillow. And then the other thing is, uh, in March, when we share our new collection, you should mock this up in that because yes. it's so cute in our new collection. Mom's okay. always giving me great <laughs> ideas. We we will say very soon we are going to have a fabric collection to share in March. With, in right? March, yeah, yeah. So. share with everyone. So that's actually a really great idea. Thank yeah. you. I'm going. I'm actually going to go do that in EQ when I get home. Yeah, yeah this one is great. I love heart blocks, so that was nice. And just, it's right before Valentine's Day. So, hey, why not share a little heart uh, quilt? Yes. And in the spirit of Valentine's colors in February, on the table, we have Afterglow. The reason I love this, I get asked all the time, I just want a super beginner-friendly pattern. This is as beginner as it gets and it has that really cool ombre effect with the darker colors at the bottom of the quilt leading up to lighter and lighter and lighter to the low vol- to the low volumes at the top and uh this is fat eighth friendly in our sincerely yours collection and that collection just gives you a lot of variety of uh colors and shops have this collection available right now. So this is something that you could work on this month or, you know, just whenever you want. So, and I also love that you shared this one because this fabric is readily available in stores now. Sometimes when we share our quilts, it's when we first get the sample yardage and are releasing the patterns and nobody can get the fabric at that point, but sincerely yours is in shops now. Yeah. And so 
That part is so hard for me. Like our excitement about sharing a new collection and sharing all of the new patterns, Mm -hmm. we really want everyone to be sewing with it right away. So it makes it really tough because we're like, okay, well, this is coming out, you know, say September-ish and we want you all to get started on projects right away. But yeah, so it's kind of nice when we can share the quilts and be like, hey, there's fabric available right now. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so do you want to talk about your quilt along that's going on right now? Yes. So we have talked about the Be Mine quilt along. Billy and I have been doing videos every Wednesday. We started January 12th, Wednesday, and we end and we it ends on February 9th, a Wednesday. And right now, currently this uh this airs January Monday, January 31st. So we still have a couple videos to come out over the next couple weeks from when you're listening right now. And the great part about it is I've had a few people message me, well, I'm starting late. And I say, I message them and say, you're not starting late because we have these videos readily available on the YouTube that goes over how to construct the blocks. You will still need the Be Mine pattern that you can find in my Etsy shop. Billy can link that. Uh, it's been so much fun and there's been a lot of people sharing their blocks on social media and they're so cute and we're actually going to be filming another video today for it. So it's a lot of fun and just join in whenever you want. It's It's been great and there's been a lot of good feedback, I feel like. so. I'll make a playlist on the channel too after we get Wednesday's video up. Yeah, so, so it's that, easier to find. So there'll be four parts and then people can sort of find that. Yeah, that'll be perfect. Helpful. Yeah, it'll be really helpful if people are searching for those older videos. Right. Okay, so I also just wanted, before we get into these listener questions, well, and actually Billy has an, an, a little message too, but I wanted to just mention, I started a Patreon community just last week, and I'm super excited about it. I've kind of been mulling this over for a couple of years. I wanted to make it something that would be beneficial and valuable for the people who joined. And so what I decided to do was offer the new free patterns that, well, offer the new small patterns that I've been doing one to two each month to the members in that community for free. So basically your membership would cover those patterns. But then in addition to that, I'm also doing an hour long Zoom that you will have access to in that community each month. So, but I want to, and we'll have a link to that Patreon. We've already got a good group in there and it's been really inspiring for me to read the introductory messages from those who have already joined, but I want to let you know, don't join today (laughs) if you want to join, wait till tomorrow because... February 1st. February 1st, right. Because if you join on January 31st, you'll get billed in January and then you'll also get billed in February. So and that's on Patreon site. On There's Patreon nothing. site. There's nothing I can do about that. So I've been kind of telling people wait till the wait till first. February yeah. to join. So or or first of the month if you're listening to this later. Right. If you're listening to this later and you know you're listening end at the of end of February, February yeah. wait till March for so it's yeah. just just so you don't get billed twice within a week's time or something. But yeah, I've already got a couple free patterns up there on the site. I'm also going to be putting block of the month patterns on there a little bit early and my ca- my free calendar pages a little bit early. Just anything I can do extra to give the people in that community a little bit of a heads up on things. Yeah, it sounds like a great platform where, you know, you can share things early. And so people who want that early access, this is a great way to get that. That sounds awesome. Right. And there's no distractions from advertising on a Facebook or a blog or anything like that. So it's very, it's ad free. At least Patreon is now. Hopefully they continue to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's why they put everything behind the paywall. Right. Is so that you don't have to deal with ads you and things have- like that. You just pay for it. Yeah. And it, you can also access it on your phone. I've been playing around with the app on my phone and also you can access it on your computer. So I, I joined another group from a popular time management author that I really enjoy. And so I joined her group at the end of last year and I just really have been enjoying that group myself and found that I could really apply it to quilting. Yeah. So... 
Okay, but we'll turn the time over to Billy. <laughs> okay, so I, I, I put this on the outline because I was a little frustrated. And this is just my OCD coming through here on the <laughs> podcast because me and my mom got new microphones to do videos with, not anything to do with the podcast. And I was really excited to use them. We filmed earlier this week, I think four videos. And then afterwards, I realized I had the wrong cord plugged into my <laughs> transmitter thing, and I didn't have any audio from it. So it was all just like from the camera that we used to film those videos, and I was really frustrated. I'm like, I'm going to tell people on the podcast, don't judge my <laughs> next video's audio based on on that, because our new microphone will be used next time we film, and it'll sound better. So, yeah. But I, I edited one video last night. And I actually, through my video editing program, I made it sound a lot better than what I thought it could. So. And that video has already aired, right, on Friday? Yes. Uh huh. That's so, the heart block video. I'm gonna go check it Which, out. Yeah. Yes. Actually, your quilt that's hanging up is in that video too, yes. Chelsea. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's uh yeah. So well, I think it sounded <laughs> okay, but it, yeah. it, it'll it'll get better. I just I I had to get that off my chest. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure it sounds fine. Billy's pretty particular about the sound on everything. He is. So. Yeah. I, I, that's my favorite part of everything is audio. Not, audio. I'm, I'm still, I don't think I'm very good at recording or, or lighting and everything, but I, oh. I feel good about my audio. Yeah, no, so. I feel like I get emails about the lighting too and that it's bright. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it really, I was actually going through all of the podcasts to see what quilts I wanted to share today. Uh -huh. And it is an astronomical difference from, <laughs> from the beginning. The, from the beginning. Yeah, yeah definitely the lighting, better. definitely. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's so crazy how long it's been that we've been doing this. It's yeah. awesome. Okay, so uh, we're going to jump right into this, I guess. Yeah, and I'll, I'll go ahead and read the questions to you guys if okay. you want me to do that, that again. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, so first one, it says, thank you, Sherry and Chelsea, so much for your podcasts. And Billy, thank you. I live on a farm in rural Australia, and listening to podcasts on quilting and cross-stitch has brought a lot of joy to my daily life. I noticed that making project bags for cross-stitch and small projects has been very popular, and I have made some project bags myself, including using the video Sherry did with Fat Quarter Shop. Thank you. Thank you for that, she's saying. Uh, some of these project bags, bag patterns, use the backing fabric as a self-binding by folding the backing fabric forwards over the raw edge and then stitching it down. My question is, have you ever used this method of binding and would you recommend it for a quilt? Thank you so much, Mandy from Australia. Hi, yeah. Mandy. Thank you, Mandy. <laughs> I... I have used this method of binding. I've never used it on a bag before, yeah. but I have used it on quilts, and I know people that still use this method today. I feel like it's not your binding won't be as strong as adding a folded binding to your quilt. I've seen some older quilts. In fact, some of my family quilts that were made by my grandmother's grandmother use this method, but the bindings often wear thin. And in fact, a few times the original quilt maker has put another binding over that binding when that folded over back binding got holes yeah. in it or frayed. So I feel like you can do it and I feel like it's fine, but it I do not feel that you will have the strength that you would have from adding a traditional binding. Yeah. See, I've never done this done before, that. Yeah, but it makes sense to me. I feel the same, like that it wouldn't be as sturdy yeah. and over time, yeah, hold up, I feel yeah. like. so. I feel like it saved a lot of time. Oh, f for sure. That and would make sense. Especially I think when I used to do a lot of tied quilts for charity with church groups, that's how they would bind it. They would just bring the back over, fold it. Yeah. Sew it down by machine, and then, you know, you could gift that quilt to a charity or a family right away, and it was quick and easy, but I do not feel like it is the most st strong way to yeah. do it. Yeah, works in a pinch, but, mm. you know, not, <laughs> I feel like in the long run. <laughs> yeah, so, but that's a great question. It because, is a good question. And I would never tell anybody not to do it either. I have a friend that just did some quilts for her sons for Christmas and she's not really a quilter 
but she has been dabbling in it and she went ahead and bound those quilts that way and that's great yeah. she might not have ever made them if she had been too intimidated to do a regular binding yeah. so to me it's better that she made it and did and, it that way yeah than, than not do it at not all to do it at all so yeah 100 yeah. percent. yeah terrific question all right so second one here says hi sherry i really enjoy hearing you answer listener questions. I find they are so often applicable to circumstances that I am also curious about. I have one that I've never heard you address, so here it goes. Have you ever ruined a quilt by washing it and the and the color fading? About 20 years ago, I made a beautiful applique quilt. It was red three-dimensional flowers and black vines on cream fabric. As it hung in my kitchen, it gradually got grubby enough that I had to wash it. When I did, the red flowers bled into the cream background, so now I have splotches of pink behind some of the flowers. Of course, it didn't. It did not do it evenly, so I can't even pretend that I wanted the background to be pink. Is there any way to remove the pink from the background? It has been in a closet for ten years. As I ponder what I should do with it, should I just chalk it up to experience and toss it? Uh, nowadays, I'd use sheets that capture loose dye in the wash and maybe. Um, what, what's that word, Mom? Synthropol. Synthropol. Synthropol? Okay. Uh, but I did not know about these things then. I'll listen for your answer in a future Listener Questions podcast. I know you do those periodically. Um, and I'll read this part, too. You and Chelsea and Billy bless me every time I listen to your program. I can hear the smile in your voices and the patience you have for one another. Have a great day, Monique. So that's a little review, too. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Monique. <laughs> Thank you, Monique. Wow, so much about this question. I, feel. I know, I know, I but it it makes my heart. I don't want you to toss it I know. because, but also I understand like the gravity of what has happened to right this quilt, which is oh, so unfortunate right. too. But I don't want you to toss it. <laughs> it's that's like a hard situation. Yeah, I feel like part of the fading might have actually come from being hung in the kitchen and being exposed to light for oh. a long period of time too. Yeah. We have some sofas that we didn't realize it at the time, but they were getting a lot of natural light in our clover yes. at house. <laughs> and when we moved, we could tell where the light coming in from the windows really had faded. Really affected the couch. Mm-hmm. And they're beautiful sofas. And so usually I have a quilt draped over the back of the one now to, wow. to cover that up. But yeah, in, uh, quilts, I and I just added a little quilt hanger in my kitchen eating area and I have a quilt there and it gets a lot of light. And also you have the the oils and the greases that might be in the air from the kitchen. From cooking. Yeah. So I feel like anything that you hang in a kitchen should be changed out very frequently, yeah. maybe monthly. And you do. You're so, pretty good about yeah. changing changing yeah. those out. So that's the first thing, because I feel like there's nothing that you can do about sun damage fading. And if those oils, and if it got kind of grubby from being there, the fading could have actually happened from the sun, and that dirt or grubbiness was kind of covering up so it might not have even been the washing that did the fading the washing spread the fabric dyes around so it could be a combination i'm not sure but it could be a combination yeah so but yes uh color catchers are great they are we recommend them highly and i I've never had a problem, you know, knock on wood. I know, wood. really, I do so, every time. I'm knocking on wood yeah. because I I use the color catchers and I just pray and I, I haven't had any anything bleed. Right. You know, you worry when you work with reds right. or dark navies or blacks or anything. It's, you worry about that. So, and, and I feel so bad that I wish I had a concrete answer about physically getting the stain out now right. after years of it being stained i don't but what's really interesting and i'll share a story my my next door neighbor was actually on a tv show during the pandemic oh really uh yes it's uh hgtv one of their online shows and she had an old family heirloom quilt that had a stain in it and the guy got it out really that's what he does he's like a cleaning 
type guy and he used like vodka or something to get it out. I've heard about using vodka as a stain remover as well. Yeah. And it was a very, very old stain and it's on, I it's on an episode that aired and it came out. So I might actually do a little research and go find out the exact okay. uh, formulation. Uh, situation. Let's try yeah. to see here. Do, do you know the name of the show? Maybe we can direct her in the right, or do you not remember? You just know I, it was on HGTV. I know it was HGTV. on HGTV. You could probably ask her and we could just pop it yes. up. Yes. Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll ask her. Yeah. It's my next door neighbor and she actually... Uh, came over to the house one day and said, did you watch my episode? And I said, oh my goodness, I know the show you're talking about because it was advertised on Facebook. Wow. Mm-hmm. I had no idea she was in the show and she'd done a Facebook post saying she was in the show. And oh, fun. they got this stain out with vodka that was years old. So yeah. And I don't know what the percentages of vodka to water, but I know this other social media person that I follow she was talking about she just keeps a spray bottle that's, I feel like it's 50-50 vodka and water, and yeah. she will just spray it on things. And I've also seen home cleaner, uh, cleaning people that I follow, I think Clean Mama, maybe yeah. she has one of her formulations that has vodka in it. Yeah. For your countertops. But I don't want to spread false hope. Yeah. So I'm being very careful right, right now to not give right. like a concrete Yeah, don't just formula. go buy 50 bottles yeah. of vodka. Please do not go to your local liquor store and be yeah. like, we need the vodka to remove yeah. the stains. Well, well, two things. I mean, a stain might be is different than bleeding. Yes. The, and fading. And, and fading. Fa- yeah. So right. that's what I wanted to sort of clarify. Right. Yeah. So it may not have any effect. It may right. not have any effect. But I did right. think of that as soon as right. but Billy I, read this. I believe that in the comments, I'm sure a lot of people will listen to this and you guys can, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of cleaning tips out there yeah, that I'm, people have, have done, probably have used the vodka yeah. solutions. And yes. so please feel free to yeah. leave those in. This is sort of taking yeah. it a different route, but that's it's good. Right. You know? And it's, we don't want to lead anybody astray. Yes, and so, so our advice is not scientific. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, but, yeah. Yeah, but I also had one other thing that I wanted to mention. When you have an older quilt, I have also heard of soaking it in a bathtub with OxyClean and Tide and just putting it in the bathtub, putting the cool water over it and adding the OxyClean and the Tide, letting it soak, drain the tub, fill it up with cool water, let it soak. Let more. it soak again, and even up to three times wow. to get that out, and then putting it in the outside to dry. You don't probably want to put an antique quilt in the dryer Is ever. This how you survived the boys playing football and baseball so, all those years? <laughs> and I have done that with sports uniforms. Yeah, and <laughs> then finally, sometimes your local quilt shop they might have. I've seen it before in little packages, and it's a wash for older quilts. Oh. And so you might ask your local quilt shop if they have. Yeah, if they have anything. Yes, but definitely don't put it in the dryer and just do a, a gentle soak in a tub as yes. opposed to even putting it in a washing machine. And please don't go out buying vodka and yeah. just pouring it over all of your yes. quilts, please. Yeah. I it do is, not, I do not, yeah, prom- I'm not promoting that. So. It is funny though, this one lady I followed, I feel like she was also advocating not to wash your jeans after every time you wear them and she would like spray it with vodka and just keep wearing the denim. I, I don't know. It's crazy. There's some, there's yeah. some crazy things. Out I don't there. wash my jeans that often. Yeah. yeah. They say They're it's better. Be. Yeah. They say jeans should really only be washed every, you know, month or so really, but I will do it like every two or three times I wear them, but I don't wash them every time. I am a str- look into it. Chelsea. <laughs> I, I'm kind of a clean, Me too. Uh, and, and mom knows this. I'm very like in high school because I'd have to wake up and I would have to shower. And then as, as soon as I got home, I would have to shower. And then my mom would be like, but you have basketball practice later today. What do you do? I just was very strange. I would like shower three times a day and that's <laughs> terrible for you. I think it dries your but, skin out. Yes. But I'm very weird about like, clean. Yeah, I had a roommate in college. He would not wash his jeans, but he put them in the freezer. I've heard of that yeah. too. Yeah, so he put them in the it's freezer. It's happening today. To I've kill heard of the that smell too. or whatever yeah. that he might have got on them. But he says, "Yeah, you don't you don't wash jeans." Yeah, like he oh, never okay. washed them. Yeah. yeah. No, I feel like if you go to websites from denim companies, they yeah. actually I think Madewell jeans they will uh, actually tell you on their website 
stuff like that. Like you don't need to wash them every time you wear your jeans. Yep. There's yeah. a whole new world, Just, Chelsea. Oh Look my into it. <laughs> this is not what I was expecting from the podcast today. <laughs> yeah. Don't wash your jeans, guys. Okay, so we'll move on from that one then. Okay. Um, the next one, hello, and thank you for the wonderful podcast. I look forward to each episode. I have a question about acquired quilts. I'm so fortunate to have several quilts given to me that are, are old, a couple over 100 years old, and of special meaning to me, including my mother's baby quilt made by friends of my grandmother. My question is this, what is the appropriate way to document these quilts? I've considered adding a label to each one, given the information that I know. A label is always with the quilt, unlike a digital documentation or hard copy photo and written information. Is it appropriate to add a label with a new fabric to an old quilt? Thanks so much. And again, love you both. Oh, thank you. We love you. I know she didn't have a name either. Yeah, or, well, we at least I didn't see yeah, one. So. I, oh, I, I can't. Yeah, you I know copy who you are. and paste those, but <laughs> yes. Uh, another terrific, terrific question. And I have a great answer to this, not because of myself, but because of my great aunt Joanne, who, and my grandmother, Jean, they were sisters. My grandmother was wonderful about putting labels on quilts. In fact, if you two, I don't know if I still have your baby quilt, I might still have yours, but I think I gave you yours. I have mine. Yeah, I definitely don't have it. Okay. So. <laughs> it's, it's in the closet out there then. But Chelsea, look, if you look on the back of that, I'm 99.9% .9 sure grandma put a label on that quilt. I'm almost positive she did. So she was very good about that. And her, her younger sister, Joanne, my great aunt Joanne, was really good about that too. And Joanne had a lot of the quilts that she inherited from her grandmother, Emma, who was a prolific quilt maker in our family. And Joanne labeled those quilts. And I actually recently reached out to some of Joanne's kids, my mom's cousins, for some information about those quilts, and they sent me some of the pictures of the labels. So I can have awesome. Billy put those up on the screen. My great aunt did a phenomenal job of labeling those quilts that were made by her grandmother. And the family, it was funny, I was kind of in a group email with my mom's cousins from this from Joanne's side of the family. And so they all kept, you know, chirping, chirping in, <laughs> chiming <laughs> in, whatever. And, you know, now that Joanne has passed on, those quilts have been distributed among her children. And they were, oh, I have this quilt and I have that. And it was so amazing because the documentation is there with all of those quilts because Joanne added those labels yeah. after the fact. So, yes, and I have a few of the labels that my grandmother made. She embroidered, hand embroidered most of them, and you don't have to do that. You can do it with a, a Sharpie, and you can just hand stitch it on to the back of an older quilt is what I would do. You, If you want to take extra time and embroider it, you can, but you can also put fabric through your printer and do it that way. I feel like... You wouldn't have to worry so much about the ink fading because those antique quilts probably aren't going to be washed. Yeah. So, and if you were, def if you do border it in fabric, and even if you use a Sharpie, you could possibly wash that and dry it before you add it to your quilt just to be sure that nothing would bleed through. Yeah. But super great question. I feel like I probably have some quilts that I should go back and label. Yeah. So, so when she says is is it appropriate to add a label with new fabric to an old quilt? It's just sort of up to you is what you're saying. It's not yeah, inappropriate. It's definitely not inappropriate yeah. at all. I think, I think it's a great beneficial idea. to yeah. your family. Yeah. And especially if you've just, if you're just hand stitching it on, it could always be removed if needed, but I don't know why you would want to remove yeah. it. So yeah. just a, a great, great question. And again, it was so funny that this came in just kind of in the same time period that I got these pictures from my cousins with those labels. Yeah, that it was my, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so the last one we have, and I know you guys might spend a little more time on this one, and it's from uh, someone I know because she's from 
here in the same town you guys live in. But (laughs) uh, question for you both, which step of putting together a quilt is the most fun for you? Deciding on a pattern, selecting fabrics, cutting out, actual sewing of the blocks, adding borders and finishing touches, or seeing it quilted up. And that's from Vicki. I just have to, before we answer, uh, just give a shout out to Vicki. She is a good friend of our family. And she, when she found out about our podcast, she was doing actually a lot of driving to go see her kids in Utah. And then she went up to Washington State. And anyway, she listened to our podcast all the way up to Washington and all the way home and caught up on all the episodes. And she... And I have a confession to make. She brought me back a chocolate cake, oh. and I didn't share it with you, <laughs> with either one oh of you. So she got me this cake in Utah. It was amazing. Oh, I bet it was. <laughs> to say mother. thank you for the podcast. And um, I feel bad. Dad did get some, but you guys didn't. So. Vicky, Vicky is going to be listening to this, mom, and she, she will know. She will know that I didn't actions. share the cake with you. <laughs> I, I do have to chime in, though. Uh, Vicky has always been someone that has been in our lives, and she's a sweetheart, and we we both love and adore her, and she's just the kindest person. And so I just loved seeing her question yeah. on here today. And I hope she knows she knows how we feel about her. So she's just wonderful. Yeah. But and this is it a, was a great amazing question. question. Yeah. Do you want to go first? Yeah. Okay. I there's nothing quite like getting your quilt back from the quilter. So that I just have to say right. first off, there is just something about having your your quilt quilted and the process has been completed and you bind it and whether you're choosing to use it or hang it on a wall or throw it over a couch, that's just a really wonderful moment. And you just like kind of a gasp moment, uh, which always makes me super happy. But I have to say it's, I just enjoy after everything has been cutting out, just getting to sew. And I actually, last night I would, I had put off some sewing that I needed to do And it was the most enjoyable thing. It was not a chore. It was wonderful. And I thought, man, it's so nice that I had this stuff ready to go and I just get to sit here and sew by myself and just enjoy it all. And I really do enjoy that the most. I enjoy sewing. And if I didn't, that might be a problem because I do it a lot. But no, I I, I don't know. Each Each step has a different feeling with it you know so i don't know i enjoy the sewing and getting the quilt back this is there's so much to this question deciding on a pattern can often be a really fun part of the journey where you think about the fabric that you're gonna you that you have or that you want to get and what am i going to make with with you know i feel like that's a whole creative process in and of itself is putting that pattern and fabric together and I love, love, love that part of the process. Sometimes I feel like that is a stopping point for a lot of people. You get stuck because yeah. either you have a favorite pattern and you want to make sure you make it in the perfect fabric or vice versa. You have the perfect fabric and you want to find the perfect pattern to go with it. Yeah, so. because you're almost like, no, this pattern doesn't deserve this fabric. Like this, we want this. Like you really overthink it almost sometimes right. because you do, you want to find the, the the perfect storm, right? You yeah. want you want the perfect little match. But but I agree there. I have patterns that I've wanted to make for years, but yeah, I'm like, no, I need the perfect fabric for it. And also I have this problem when I pick out it, when I finally have picked out a a pattern maybe for fun or something. I keep conjuring up in my head like, oh, but reds and greens for Christmas. Like I got to make three of them because I love this pattern so much that I want to do it in different ways. So it is a whole, that is a whole process within itself. So yeah. Yeah. And then uh, cutting out, I would say uh, (laughs) probably that is probably my least favorite part now. Uh, 20 years ago, I probably would have said binding, but now I love binding because yeah. it's just like my last time to hold that quilt up close. And especially if it's been custom quilted or even if it hasn't, even if it just has a really fun 
all over pattern. You're just looking at that up close. We all know how much I like binding. Yeah. <laughs> I'll drop off some quilts to mom. Hey, you got a few episodes to watch today. <laughs> I, I do enjoy binding, but just as life has gotten a little bit busier, I I find myself just, it's, it's I'll put it off a little longer than yeah. I should. I actually should tell you, I have a new TV series I'm watching, so hey. I can, I'm up for some binding I'm if up. you want to hey, perfect. machine sew it on and bring it oh, over. I will machine sew okay. it off. <laughs> yeah. I found a new series. You guys, so. when she offers, <laughs> I don't decline the opportunity. Yeah. But I I also do want to say this. Uh, Cutting definitely is my least favorite part. That is why I always give the tip, cut everything out before, because I just don't like going, like mental headspace. I don't want to go back to cutting halfway through the process. I want to enjoy the quilting process. And then, but, but one thing that helps Last night, I put a new blade on my rotary cutter, (laughs) and I had thought my mat was done for. I've almost called you like three times this past week. Order me a new mat, you know? (laughs) And I was like, wow, that made a world of difference. I just needed to switch out the blade, and things were awesome, and my hand wasn't cramping. And uh, so that does help if you don't like the cutting process, just letting you know. Yeah. No, and I completely agree with you about seeing that quilt quilted up for the first time. I just actually got one back yesterday and we were busy, so I wasn't able to look at it right away. And it was kind of driving me crazy. Like I wanted to go in the other room and get that bag and look at that quilt and didn't get to do it until later that afternoon. But also I feel like when that first block is finished, that's a really great part of the process because then You know, you see for the first time how those fabrics work together with that block. And that's really a part of the process that I really love. Yeah. I I see adding borders and stuff on here. I sometimes I will be sitting like I'll design a pattern and then I'll, I'll finally be making it like we're expecting fabric soon. So I'm going to be making some quilts soon that I designed, but it's going to be like a month. Right. before I'm able to do that. And sometimes I'll sit there and I'm getting close and my blocks are done. And then I'm like, Chelsea, you do this to yourself every time. You had sashing and you had borders and you could just be sewing these blocks together. <laughs> so I don't love it, but I also love how a quilt looks with sashing and borders. And so I do it almost every single time. Yeah. Uh, and it's an extra step, but Sometimes that quilt just needs that extra space. So I also don't love, I think when you get your quilt top together, you're not in your head. Like, I love that I get to put on borders next when the, you know, when this quilt top could be done, but that's also not a favorite part, but I still enjoy how it looks on the quilt. Yeah. I will say that. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought up borders because I I don't really love the time it takes to measure the quilt measure the border, pin it, sew it, trim, do the whole thing. But I think something that's helped me with that is that I know exactly how long it takes me now to add borders to a quilt. And it's a little bit longer than I probably would have guessed initially. But now that I know that actual time, when I get to that stage, I can tell myself, okay, this will be done in this amount of time because this is how long it takes me to add borders to a quilt this size. And that's helped because then I have it in my brain that, no, it's not going to happen in 15 minutes. My, You know, it's just not. It's not realistic. And I like that you brought that up because I'll do the same. I'll be like, oh, well, I do have this time that I could do this. And knowing actually really helps. Right. Like, just knowing the time frame that you're going to be working within right. is really, really helpful. Yeah. And actually, surprisingly, just one more thing, I actually quite enjoy making my backings for some odd reason. Oh, you do? I like it. Huh. I don't know why. I, well, I think one day I made like a, a ton of them. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, it was when we were working on the book. Oh, right. And well, you actually made a couple for me. But oh, I, I don't, I don't yeah. know. One time I was making all of these backings. I don't know why I like yeah. making the backings oh. for some reason. So, And you know what? That's, that brings me to a point. Sometimes, I, and I can't remember who I heard this from, but I've heard of people making backings and just having them stored in the closet. So they would just, 
and I guess this would only work if you knew. You knew the sizes. How does this work? Well, because I feel like if you're making a lot of lap size quilts or you could make, you could take four yards and do 72 by, yeah, and have that in there and it would work for a lot of things even if you trimmed it down. Here, let me go into my library of backings that I have prepared. (laughs) So I don't know, I guess. You know, I that's that's a good idea if you had one kind of ready. I guess you could always add fabric to the side if you needed yeah. it to be bigger too. I, I would say always have backing fabric on hand. Yes. Like you you know at some point you'll be making seasonal quilts. Right. And so if you have a fabric that you really love, I always buy extra. Right. Because I know, oh, I'm going to use that for yeah. backing. Or I come over to mom's house and I shop from her stash and well, uh, do that as well. So <laughs> yeah, I usually buy a bolt every year of something that I'm going to use for yeah. backing for all my Christmas quilts for that year. Then you know you have it on hand. Right. And I usually buy a bolt of a Minnick and Simpson fabric every year that I'm going to use for my red, white, and blue yeah. backings. Because so. let, let me tell you, it's really easy if you don't have a backing on hand to fold that quilt top up and put it in the closet and not yes. think of it again. Yeah. But if you have the backing available, you know, you want to know what this is available. I can take this to the quilter. Right. And I'm going to do that so that it doesn't sit in my closet. And I have some quilts sitting yes. in my closet. <laughs> we were just talking about it earlier, some older, older quilts. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. This, that was that a was, great question. That was a great question. Thank you, Vicky. Yeah. J- just to confirm, though, which of those um, categories is your favorite, though? I, you may have said it right at the beginning. <sighs> Billy does this to me all the time. I think Chelsea said her it's favorite sewing. was seeing. Oh, it's not seeing it quilted. No, the actual oh, sewing of the blocks goodness. is your favorite. No, seeing seeing the quilt. Okay, seeing it but, all but quilted see, up. Oh, nope, nope. Billy, okay, final. I'm gonna say the same thing. Okay, so seeing the quilt. That's for the both absolute of you icing on the cake. He the brings me best. so much anxiety. Okay. That's why we love our quilters. But the process I mean, is you, what makes that quilt. I, I have to appreciate both. I understand. Yeah. You've discussed every every one, yeah. which is great. But I okay, just wanted yes. to finalize yeah. which one. See, I like questions answered. Mom, mom and Billy actually, and I told mom this yesterday. They they are really great at making me make Chelsea. You've got to make your decisions <laughs> yeah. by yourself. Right. And sometimes, mom, I just told her at lunch yesterday. Uh, I'll be like, yeah, I'll, sometimes I'll text mom because I just want someone to give me the answer to something. And she will strategically not answer that question and bring up something else. And I'm always like, oh, she's oh, she's doing this to me. But it's so helpful because then I'll come back and be like, you want to know what mom? I sent that email and I made that decision all by myself. And so mom is great at helping me grow and progress. You're welcome. Thanks, Billy. Yeah. You as well. You as well. <laughs> okay, Thank so you. we'll wrap it up with the podcast review, but this one's based off our very last episode with the interview with Lisa Bonjean. Oh, um, yeah, so, and this came into my email, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not on Apple Podcasts, but yeah. we figured this would be good because it was such a recent episode. Yeah. So she says... Uh, Hello, Sherry and Chelsea. Just wanted to stop by and say how I love your podcast and your most recent episode excited me so much. I can't resist emailing you. I'm an intermediate quilter taught by my mama in eastern Kentucky. I recently discovered your podcast, blog, and Facebook group while searching for a block of the month club. I have so enjoyed listening to you both and learned something new every episode. Your most recent episode with Lisa Bonjean from Primitive Gatherings held such fantastic fantastic information for me. My in-laws live five minutes from her store and the gathering retreat. I had no idea. I'm already researching workshops of hers that I can attend and drop the baby off at grandma's. Thank you so much for your wonderful, wonderful work designing, quilting, blogging, and podcasting. The quilting world is so much better thanks to the, to the two of you. Have a wonderful and happy day, Lauren. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> So, I know it was so awesome. fun. Yeah, I loved I loved getting stuff like this in my email box, and I bet you those in laws are going to be super happy too because they'll get to see the grandbaby. Yeah. More. <laughs> well, and you know what else is yeah. funny is like I think you mentioned to Lisa, you're like, well, I'm not sure if anyone who's listening to this won't already know about right? your your place yeah. and your retreat and everything. Well, there's just one example yeah. of somebody who was like, oh. 
I know where that is and, yeah. and I live right there. And so, you know, you sent someone potentially Lisa's way. So I yeah. think it's, you never know if you're yeah. Lisa Bonjean, Jenny Doan, Kimberly Jolly, whoever, you never know. You might introduce somebody to them that, that didn't know about them. Right. Yeah. In fact, I need to forward this email to Lisa. Yes, Just let her you read do. it. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, wow. That was a great, yeah. that was a lot of fun. It's a great episode. It always, always is. <laughs> Uh, so the, our next episode yep. will be on Valentine's Day, correct? Yes. Yep. Yes, Monday, February 14th. Yay. And I think we should maybe give a little plug for that because that will be a, another guest podcast, actually two guests, but they will be live in person. Yes. In the yes. studio. Yes. And we haven't done that since Vanessa was here. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is this is really really fun that this was able to work out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we recorded it yesterday, and it's it's going to be very informational for a lot of people who have asked questions on a specific topic. But we won't give that topic away. We won't. So that's all we can say about it. But it'll be it'll be a great definitely episode. a good watch. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you then. Thanks so much for stopping by. Bye.